It may surprise you, but the Bible does not condemn sex outside of marriage. So yes, the Bible does condemn sex outside of marriage. That doesn't mean that sex outside of marriage is objectively bad or immoral. And no, there may not be direct verses specifically in the Bible specifically saying that sex outside of marriage is a sin. But a part of the cultural context of the ancient Near East, sex outside of marriage was frowned upon and it was looked at as immoral. And cultural morals come, they go, they change, they evolve. And so, yes, that was a part of the cultural norms of the day for people to look at sex outside of marriage and think it was bad. But that was a cultural norm that was 2,000 years ago. And I'm a Christian saying this. You know what the Bible doesn't condemn? Slavery. And I'm black. And I'm a Christian saying this. Leviticus 25.45, you may also purchase them from the foreigners residing among you or their clans living among you who are born in your land. These may become your property. Not done yet. You may leave them to your sons after you to inherit as property. You can make them slaves for life. But as for your brothers, the Israelites, no man may rule harshly over his brother. But you may be saying, Wayne, wait, that's the Old Testament. Okay, let's go to the New Testament. In Acts chapter 12, Peter is broken out of jail from an angel and Peter makes his way to go to a house that's filled with Christians. And these Christians are praying for Peter to be released from jail. Well, when Peter goes, he knocks on the door. Acts chapter 12 says, when he knocked at the door of the gate, a slave woman named Rhoda came to answer. Now, some translations will say, servant girl, this was not a servant. She was a freaking slave. So Christians in the first century had slaves. And it wasn't looked at as immoral in that culture. But then you may be saying, what about the book of Philemon? Okay. The book of Philemon is a letter written to Philemon because Philemon's slave Onesimus, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Onesimus, he escaped and Paul writes a letter to Philemon. For this perhaps is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever. So this slave runs away and Paul sends him back to his slave master. Then he says, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. And that might sound great and that might sound nice, but you know what's a whole lot better than sending your slave back to be treated as a brother? Letting your slave go free. And the Bible never once condemns this. Paul doesn't condemn it. Peter doesn't condemn it. James doesn't condemn it. Jesus Christ doesn't condemn it. So what's my point here? The point is that the Bible was written in a specific cultural context. It was written in a cultural world. And in the cultural world the Bible was written in, people thought that sex outside of marriage was bad. Because women had a value system attached to them. It wasn't really bad if a man had sex before marriage. Men could do pretty much sexually whatever they wanted to do. They could have two, three, four, five, hundreds of wives. But if you're a woman, definitely if you're a woman, you had no rights. So let's just be technical here. Sex outside of marriage for women was looked at as bad in the ancient Near East. But they also thought slavery was completely fine. So... Because the Bible is a part of that cultural world, of course the Bible condemns sex outside of marriage. And of course, the Bible accepts slavery. But just don't treat your slave too bad. If he's your brother and if he's not your brother, well, screw it. But in the New Testament, if he's not your physical brother or descendant, well, he's your brother in spirit. And you can have your spiritual Christian brother as a physical slave. Because morals... So I am a Christian. I do affirm that the Bible does speak against sex outside of marriage. But I also affirm that the Bible is a work of human literature, human culture. And just because the people who wrote the biblical text believed that sex outside of marriage was a sin, that doesn't therefore make it definitively a sin or definitively objectively wrong. Because they had a lot of beliefs where if I wrote a whole list, 
a lot of people who are Christians today in the 21st century would disagree. So as a Christian, I don't look at the Bible as a legal or moral rule book. I look at the Bible as what biblical scholars would call wisdom literature. The Bible is supposed to give you ancient Near Eastern wisdom, and we're supposed to take the wisdom that can apply and that should apply in the 21st century, and we're supposed to take that wisdom as best as we can apply it. So should you have sex outside of marriage? Well, that's the problem. If you need to go to the Bible and if you need to open up Article 6, Section 5, Bible verse Z, do you really have wisdom? The fact of the matter is the Bible is supposed to give you enough wisdom that you don't need to open up the Bible at all and you should know what to do because the spirit of wisdom that was in Christ as a Christian is now inside of you. And in life, a lot of times there won't be an exact Bible verse that you can go to, but you're going to need to have the spirit of wisdom. All right, guys, I'm off here. I'm about to go enjoy my life. If you want to know more, go to the link in my bio, get my books in my bio, Secrets of the Bible from the East. My books are not available on eBay. You can only get my books by going to the link in my bio. They're only available on my website. And don't forget to follow me.